Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube with another in the series, Copic Craft and Pencil. And I'm calling this one Tweetist because that is the name of the stamp set from Penny Black, drawn by Moan Manning. Very sweet little image that we're going to color using Copic markers, not on craft paper. I shouldn't have necessarily said craft, but most people think of this as craft, but it's a paper called Desert Storm and it's by Nina and it has Nina properties to it. So regular craft papers are made on who knows what kind of paper. You can certainly try stamping and coloring on them. I'm not saying you can't, but I can't vouch for every single craft paper out there because lots of them are made on much less quality papers than this. So they may or may not work well with your Copic markers. But one of the cool things about them is that colors blend really nicely because you have basically a mid-tone already down. So you're whites are not blending into your colors or your colors not, are not blending into a white they're blending into a color that already exists it's already a mid-tone coloring on this means you do have to adjust what colors you choose to color with so for a caucasian skin i would rarely use an e13 for shadow color but on this i need to to make it show up to give it a little oomph a little punch but look at that, I didn't even blend that shadow color into our skin and it already just blended itself. So it's pretty cool that way, that it's able to blend much more easily than on white paper. I'm gonna color her some white R14 hair. And this color is normally a, a brighter orange than this, but notice that it's much darker here on this dark paper, on this uh, toned paper. If you're going to use a different color of paper. I always recommend coloring one of your hex charts on that paper. If you've purchased the hex chart from my website, you can certainly print it as many times on different paper that you need to in order to facilitate your artwork. So make yourself one that's on the Desert Storm paper and that way you'll have a better idea of what colors you can choose that are going to achieve the effects that you want. And for the hair here, I'm using a whole bunch of different colors because it was just fun getting into making her hair look rounded and giving, giving her that kind of yellowish glow at the top while having lots of heavy contrast as well in her hair to give it lots of roundness. So for her little jeans, I was playing around with what to do for denim color here. And you know, the, the B95 worked as a base color and then adding the B97 was not quite dark enough. So then I had to go back in with the B95 to try to blend that and I added B99 to add my shadows and I just kept going. Sometimes you just need to keep trying. So don't give up, just keep going for it. So add her a little lip color and then I started working on the areas that are gonna be white. She's gonna be wearing a white shirt. She's gonna have these white tinnies and I need to add some shadows onto them. And a C3 blends in fairly softly on its own, but I'll use a little C1 to blend it out a little bit more. And then I thought for her shoes, let's give her a little bit of red in her shoes and that'll pull a little bit more of that color down there as well. Give her some red shoelaces and uh, give that some fun. How about some color for the little bird? Now this YG11 did not do much of anything, hardly showed up. So I skipped over to a YG03. So that's one of those things where you'll have to test out your colors and see how exactly they work. Even a yellow doesn't show up very much on here, but it'll give it a little bit of a yellow tone so that our little birdie is gonna stand out just a little bit. So now I'm gonna go in with my pencil, the pencil you always want to use as the last step because you don't wanna color your Copic over top. But look at what happens when I add just a little highlight on her nose and her cheek, a little bit on the tops of her legs and a little bit on her arm and then on the white objects on the, the card, on the picture. And it adds a real strong highlight just by adding those, those highlights to her shirt and everything. Then the, the real power comes in the black pencil. Make sure it's really sharp and then add those lines back in for her eyes. And anywhere where there's deep shadows, just throw a few lines in just so you get that contrast of really dark color to go along with everything else and, and get that, that pop of color. 
We can add a little detail into her shoes, into her jeans, her, her little shorts and things by just putting my black shadow on the, the shadow side of the image, on the left side that's away from the light. And now my little birdie can finally get some love too because he's got all kinds of beautiful little spots that he can have in his feathers. And with that black pencil right on top, I can give him a lot of that little detail. You can also do that with a black pen. It'll just look a little less natural to do it that way. The shadow underneath you can add either with a Copic marker or a pen. I tried a little Copic on top of the pencil. It was not as successful as probably doing just one or the other, either pencil or Copic, but my marker did survive. It didn't get destroyed by using it on top of it, so I was glad to see that at least. So there is the finished card. Very cute, just mounted onto some red cardstock. The other image that I've already colored here on YouTube in this little series that may have some more coming in the future is this little guy. I'll leave a link to him here in the end card so you can watch that video if you would like. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me and you can hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, share it with your friends if you think they'll learn something from it and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss anything here on YouTube and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.